I was a vinyl junkie, baby. If I ain't have the vinyl, man, you know what I'm saying? I'd just go beat your grandmother up because I got to get my vinyl fix on, man. It wasn't like this. You couldn't get no files. You could There was no YouTube or no LimeWire, none of this other stuff. It wasn't no downloading. What? Yeah, crazy? In order for you to separate yourself from any other DJ, you had to have that collection. It's the original DJ Jazzy J from the Mighty Mighty Zulu Nation. And this is my take on the crate diggers. We're gonna do it a little something like this and dig up in the crates for y'all. How y'all feel about that? Let's do it. Between what I have here, storage, and my mother's side, my mother's like, you don't come get these records, I'm gonna toss them out, but you know, she know that's a part of my history now. Lay your death, ma. You know, and uh, I would say somewhere in, in the neighborhood of anywhere between four, four to six hundred thousand. It is chaos. It is chaos. My profession is I'm I'm a, I'm a carpenter, so like everything you see around here, everything in this room, I. I practically built or you know built the whole room actually you know it was it came to a point where uh, I was sleeping one day and downstairs underneath me I heard bang 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 no this was not a drummer warming up this was not nothing these were my records tumbling over because I had them all in crates stacked up on one another and the one thing you got to know about crates they're good back in the days for carrying stuff but they were never meant to, to, to really house records and stuff like that so when you start stacking them and especially if you stack them so that you can get to them what happens is they start doing this and one day they're gonna do that so and that's what happened so uh, basically I just kind of like took them all out of crates and and started building these shelves and just kind of threw them up in shelves. I got certain sections where I kind of like, okay, this is the good stuff over here, rare stuff. I want to sample some beats. I got grooves and stuff like that. Uh, you know, party jams. I go over to this section right here and uh, this will rock a party, whatever the deal is. I go over to another section and I got jazz. I go into another section, I got soul. But uh, for the most part, it's like, you know, it's like hit and miss. Let's see, this look like some grainy stuff over here. What the hell is that? Nah, um, woo. Nah, we, oh, oh, woo, oh, liquid, liquid. All right, everybody knows this. Cavern, boom, 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 You know what's crazy is, at the same time, we did It's Yours, and we were selling it out the trunk of my car. They were selling Liquid Liquid, we go like to nine nine records and, 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 and sell records that in it was like it was like kinda interesting. Nine nine, yeah. It was kinda interesting. We you know, it was like, you know, basically kinda we were born at the same time. I got into the culture of hip hop early on, actually in its developmental stages in the Bronx back in the mid seventies. Basically riding my bike through the projects. It was always a sound emanating from um Bam, from Bam Bada's window, you know, who kind of, he was the one that kind of inspired me to like really go to the next level. Red Alert was the one who taught me how to DJ. And my uncle, uh, my uncle Robert, uh, uh, he said he was like the family DJ. You know, say when the family parties used to jump off, whenever Uncle Robert used to get there, you know, that's when the party really started happening. Come with a bag full of 45s or records album. Once he starts throwing them records on, it was, you know, it was a thing. So. The music thing was always in my blood and it was in my veins. Down here, SSO. This is a, a song I did. Uh, I kind of sampled some of this to do a song for Diamond D called Went For Mine. Then new year later, years later, they sampled my song to do Busta Rhyme Song, New York State of Mind, whatever it is, Rhythm Heritage. Another part of the Sacred Crates, uh, one of them Bambada Sure Shots. Sure Shot, Sure Shot, Body Rock. Bambada kind of brought us down to like Negrels, Peppermint Limes, Danceteria, and of course the Roxy. And um, just remember this crazy looking white guy standing in front of the booth every Thursday night. He would stand there the whole night and just shake his head. And then, you know, one day he got up the nerve and he introduced himself to me and this was Rick Rubin. 
So he said, all right, listen, I'm, you know, I, I, I think you're great, you're phenomenal, blah, 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 this and that, you know what I'm saying? So we became friends. You know, we used to hang out the whole full nine and, you know, every day would be me and Rick, I'm down at five university place, I played at NYU and everything like that. So he came and he said, listen, I want to start a record label. So uh, I was like, no problem, let's do it. We didn't, we didn't have no plan for anything to be first. We just said, listen, we want to start a record label. Let's just make a song. And at that time, the only artist we had was me. And being that I wasn't a rapper, you know what I'm saying, it was good that we had T because at least, at least he had something to say. You notice it was Def Jam 001, which is this your 002 and 003, all my songs. And Cold Chillin' in the Spot, we just had, I just made up a beat on the DMX. And Russell came in with uh, Andre Harrell one night, came into the studio. He was drunk from a party. And we was like, hey, we ain't got nothing to put on this record throw Russell in the booth and Russell went in there and just talked nonsense and that's the way it, you know it, it got printed just like that we didn't have no game plan we didn't have no knowledge of what we were doing we just did it because it just felt good to do it before this album was coming it was, it was like the, the first the first ever heard of a uh, 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 record company you know saying uh, uh, getting that type of money this album was uh, left with me and Steve at at uh, at Chung King Studio, with a bunch of dismo beats, and I don't think LL even wanted to rhyme off for half of them, but it was just like so young and just like I just want to be down, you know what I'm saying? So uh, we went in there and like most of uh, yeah, cut every time you hear cut creator, Jazzy J is cut creator. I remember the Beastie Boys. I kind of corrupted them a little bit. I, they were they were young little you know, Jewish kids from Brooklyn. I got introduced to them by Rick Rubin, and um, I introduced them to Brass Monkey, and they lost the damn minds. I was like, oh my God, they even made a song about it, you know? The, the record uh, that they, they, they used for, for uh, Brass Monkey was a group called uh, Wild Sugar, Wild Sugar, and the song was Bring It Here, and uh, they used that and made Brass Monkey. I kind of sat in on that one. I still didn't, Rick, you still didn't return my Wild Sugar, Bring It Here, I, I got more copies, but uh, I, I want my record back. Look of love, rock, rock it in the pocket, you know what I'm saying? But actually, if you buy this, thinking you're gonna have that version of rock it in the pocket, not the version, not the version. The, the album version, it's not the greatest. It was a thing, it was a challenge play those songs before anybody else plays, so you got to tag the credit for bringing that song out. You know what I'm saying? Now, Bam Bada got so many tags, so many credit, because he was the master of records, but you got people like Flash, DXT, Kool-Aid, you know, cats that brought out like what we call, contributed to what we call the sacred crates. And the sacred crates are the, the foundation upon which hip hop the whole culture was built. I picked this up in California. I was digging in, in, in a store in California and was like, oh man, I pulled this on the side and, and the guy was like, uh, nah, go ahead, just take that. You know how hard it is to find this record? Catch a groove on the Greedy label. This is like one of the, the, the sacred crates, like I said. Uh, catch a groove. So you know, something like this, most DJs wouldn't even be able to ever play this. No way, no way, in form of faction, because it's, it's 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 crazy hard to find. If you if you wasn't in that era, because they they definitely ain't pressing them up no more. If you wasn't in that era that you can find them, it's just like almost impossible. If you don't have some record, in, some vinyl in your collection, man. You know what I'm saying? You can't holler at a cat like me, man. You know, I love you to death, and, and you might be you might be hot on wheels hot on the computer at pushing buttons or whatever the deal is, but you know, it's, it's, you gotta, this is what it's all about. Vinyl junkies, it makes it real hard to get your fix when record stores are closing down, left and, oh, did I nod off, wait, I need to touch some vinyl again real quick. When we go in the store and we look over and you see that guy, hmm, he's here again. 
and then you hide what you got because you don't want him to see where he's hiding what you got. Yeah, he don't you you don't even want to be seen in the same category as him. It's like, hmm, let me go over here or whatever. But then he's in the store in the but you know, it was a camaraderie and, and it was a it was a it was a it was an undercover subculture of its of its own. You know what I'm saying? Going out, finding those rare records, finding that store, finding that uh collection in somebody's basement. Hey, dude, I if I came to your house, you know what I'm saying? First thing I would do is go in the living room and start looking through your 45s, start looking through your, your collection. And God forbid you say, oh, them old records. Oh, man, let me take these old beat up records off your hands. I walk out there with, a, with your whole collection, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know, it's just, I guess it's something that can't really be explained in one interview. You know, you'd probably have to get a psychiatrist in there. So how were you feeling when you bought these records? I was feeling damn good because I had something that you ain't got, you know? As you can see, back in the days, you would scratch your name in the record or, or mark it out so people didn't know exactly what you was playing. So that was DJ Jazzy J before I took the, took the, the initiative to change it from letter J to J-A-Y. You know, it was back in the days. Oh, another, another hip hop classic. And you know, I had this for so long. You can see the album covers all beat up. I, I try to protect some of these uh, jewels by putting the, uh, the cases on them or whatever the deal is. but. You know, have a nice day. Classic, 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 uh, you know. Sorry for what happened. I like to make it right. I ain't no singer. You know, it's part of part of the routines that, you know, cats like Kaz and, you know, Melly Mel doing the signature routines off of songs like this. You know, it took us back to a day and time when when hip hop was like in its uh in its rarest form and you know, songs like this ruled. We in the bush. All right, listen, a lot of elements make up a DJ. The crate thing in, that's a, lot, a big part of it. But another major part of it is what I'm gonna show you right now. You know what? Unless you had your own sound system, you wasn't a DJ. All you DJs without sound systems, boy. Don't holler at me, you know what I'm saying? This is the Jazzy J wall of sound. Check me out. When this come on, baby, it's the real deal, all right? Holla at me. <laughs> me and Islam used to get up early in the morning, you know what I'm saying? Meet up at the train station, go, to, go down to 34th Street and start there, go all the way down to the village, you know what I'm saying? Walking, stopping at each record store, you know, buying. We used to just buy records just because we looked at the cover. You had five guys with afros and it looked funky. Yo, let's just buy it. One day we was in Chicago and we, you know, we battled all of the Chicago DJs and whipped their ass, I might add. I'm digging in a section. Islam is next to me. A copy of Indiscreet by DC LaRue. You know how rare this record is? They're each numbered. And I'm, I'm thinking, and I happen to just turn my head for a second. Right when that record came up and Iz is next to me, he spotted that from like two bands away. Oh yeah, I need, I'm like, how did that happen? How, did, how, how you gonna just reach into my, that, that's like, that, that could have, that, like, if he wasn't my brother, that was like fighting, you know, fighting situations. DC LaRue himself gave me one uh, two summers ago. I met him and I was like, yo, do you know how big? He gave me, he gave me one, he gave Grandmaster Cavs one, original copy with the stamp on it. And he, he, sta he individually stamped those records himself. Classics. The most I've dropped at any point in time would probably be, uh, I bought out a, 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 a cat who had a, a, whole, a whole store and I bought his whole collection and I think I spent about, about five grand on that. It had to be at least about, at least about 100 to 150,000 records. Yeah, that was because uh, what happened is he was closing his store and he's like, yo, just, yo, five grand. He, 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 I was like, I was like, yo, I don't even need to look at it. Just, just give me, give me the whole store. Sometimes it ain't all about digging. Sometimes you don't want to dig that deep. What you want to do is like, you know what? Give me all of that. I, I'll sort through it later. I'll sift through it later. I got, you know, how many records I, I got that I, I don't, even, I don't even know I got them. There's the diehard cats like myself. And, 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 and so many others that uh, uh, remain nameless right now, but they know who I, they know who they are. We'll still be doing this because we believe in this as a part of us. 
you know what I'm saying, where the cat, other cats get, oh, I ain't making no money off this, then they'll go to the post office and get jobs, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's an effort that goes into each and every single one of these pieces of vinyl, and that's what we try to bring out when we put the needle on the record, put the needle on the record, put the needle on the record, and go like that.